Hey YouTube and welcome to the fourth episode of Operating System Development Series provided by the iNow channel. Today we are going to be building the entire project on Windows. If you haven't watched the previous episodes yet, you can find the links in the description section below. Otherwise, let's get started. Hi guys and uh, welcome again. So um, the first thing you need to do is to download the package from the link which you can find in the description section below. It is an archive file that I made which contains all the needed tools including compilers, linkers and emulators and then extract that file in your desired location. So I have extracted mine here in Sigwin uh, in, uh, in the folder. It is the folder is called Sigwin here and you need also the project files which we are going to compile so here it is so in the so in this folder here we've got a kernel.asm which is the entry point of our kernel a kernel.c which is the main kernel the kernel itself that we are going to compile and the link.ld which will organize um, which will tell the linker how to organize the the uh, the object files generated by the compiler, how to organize them together to make the final kernel. And here we've got an include folder which contains all the header files that our kernel.c needs in order to uh, in order to work. So to compile the uh, uh, the operating system, this small operating system. Open up the folder which you've extracted from the from the package file that you have downloaded, and you'll see here that I've got a bunch of folders and uh, files. So to show you what I uh, have added to this, uh, it is basically Sigwin, and I have added a few packages to it to fit our needs. So to tell you what are those changes, here I've added NASM. So here we've got NASM folder, which contains the NASM.exe uh, binary uh, command, which we are going to be using to compile the kernel.asm. And here we've got KEMU, which we are going to be using, this one, which we are going to be using to uh, test our kernel after building it and uh, inside usr slash cross slash bin here we've got the compiler which is called i586-elf-gcc command and also we've got our linker so the compiler and the linker are here and of course after adding these folders and uh, Binaries, I have to add uh, an environment variable to Sigwin to be able to find them while using it. So you can edit that file in etc. Here it is called profile. So I'll open it with. So this is the file. So you can scroll down till you find here uh, path, this one. Here you can put all of all of your um, all of your paths, all of your environment variables. So as you can see, I added usr slash cross slash bin, which contains the i586 toolchain and the kami folder and the nasm folder. So, so to compile, open up the sigwin.bat file. <coughs> which is in the root folder of the root folder that you've extracted to sigwin.bat and here you'll get um, a terminal. So the first thing we need to do is to navigate to this folder, the folder of our project. So our project is in C drive slash users slash the username slash desktop. So to navigate to that um, folder, 
go to the bash terminal and type in cd c colon and press enter to navigate to the c drive now to go to that uh, specific directory simply um, cd to its entire path so cd um, users slash the username slash desktop slash i know us and press enter and as you can see now we are in that folder if you like to clear up the screen press control l simultaneously so this will clear up the screen so first uh, so let's start compiling the kernel so the first thing we want to compile is the kernel.asm so type in nasm dash f e l f space um, dash o k a s m dot o space kernel dot a s m and press enter and as you can see a new object file has been created called kasm.o so here we are using the nasm binary to generate a file which is a format elf and the output name of that file is kasm.o and the input file name is kernel.asm now the second thing we want to compile is the kernel.c file so type in i586-elf-gcc space dash m32 space uh, space dash o um, kc dot o space dash c space um, ker no dot c so here we are using the i586 elf gcc compiler to generate a file which is a format um, uh, which is a type uh, mode 32 bit and uh, to output a file which is called kc.o from a file called kernel.c and we press enter and as you can see a new object file has been created in our uh, working folder so now what we need to do next is to combine these two objects together we need to link them with the linker so we do that by typing i 586-elf-ld space dash m space elf underscore i386 space dash capital letter t space link dot ld space dash o space cur no dot bin space k a s m dot o space k c dot o so here we are using the i586 elf linker to create a file of mode elf i386 and we are using the link.ld file to set all the parameters of how the, these two objects must be compiled uh, linked together and the output name of the kernel will be called kernel.bin and the first input file is called kasm.o and the second input file is called kc.o and make sure to put kasm.o first since it must be linked first since it is the entry point of our kernel and then press enter and as you can see a new kernel.bin file has been created now to test that uh, to test to see if that file works if that kernel works type in camu dash system dash i386 
space dash kernel space kernel dot pen so we are using the Camu system i386 emulator we are testing to see if a kernel is working the kernel is called kernel dot pen so if we press enter as you can see the operating system is working pretty much well so I'm gonna type in something and it is working so that's how you compile uh, a kernel an operating system on Windows so now let's talk about a little bit on um, what's the difference why is, is it has to be a little bit different on Windows more than Linux so the linker is the program that takes the object files generated by the compiler to link them together in an organized way and the output of the linker is the final executable program which means that if you are building on Windows uh, with a regular tools provided on Windows then you will not be able to build a standalone operating system in fact, you will find yourself building an app that requires an operating system to run on top of. Our operating system is based on the ELF format. So it needs ELF tools in order to be compiled. And to understand what I mean, open up terminal and type in... So open up terminal and type in LD space dash capital letter V and press enter it says the supported emulations are only um, I386 PE now if you type in I586 dash ELF sorry so dash elf dash ld space dash capital letter v and press enter as you can see it says the supported emulations are elf i386 which is the format we are using uh, we are we use in compilation of our kernel so um, this new compiler and linker we are using are called cross compilers and cross linker or cross tool chain to be more general they allow you to build programs that will run on different platforms and you build them on your own machine so like for example if you want to build a an application that runs on Android you build that application on your own Windows machine so the compilers you must use are different than those you find in your Windows environment so that's normal so that's what I did exactly I searched across compilers to do not waste time and recompile uh, my own versions and um, then I grabbed all the needed tools NASM and uh, Camu and then I uh, combined them together with Sigwin uh, because it's a powerful bash uh, it, looks, uh, it gives you a Linux like uh, feeling and uh, then that's it that's what is going on exactly oh um, before I forget so uh, if you'd like to change the name of the cross compiler tools you can go to your folder and of course you can go for example to Kemi and uh, change the name from Kemi-system i386 you can just make it simply Kemi but I do not suggest doing that because if uh, you change the name of a file that has dependencies to other files or other files has dependencies to it to be rather correct then um, a, a risk might happen for example, if you, um, if your uh, if the compiler or the this one, for example, this file, if there is another file uses this one, if you change its name, the other one will not be able to access this one anymore. Okay. 
which means that your system might get damaged. I mean, uh, your development environment, not your computer. <laughs> so, so thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comment, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and see you guys later.